Welcome to It Takes Two, a co-op puzzle game that requires two players at all times similar to A Way Out. Today, I'm going to try to answer one question. Is it possible to platinum It Takes Two solo? I wanted to attempt this challenge because I don't have any friends to play with, and more importantly, It Takes Two won Game of the Year in 2021, so I needed to experience it for myself. Since it's co-op only, you have the option of playing online with someone else or grabbing a second controller to play locally like I'm going to do in this video. One controller is for May on the left side of the screen and the other one controls Cody on the right. Together we'll explore the theme of today's video, collaboration, clearly communicated by our friend here, Dr. Hakeem. Chapter 1, fix your relationship. This fun little book guy explains we've basically been shrunk down into toys and forced to solve puzzles to repair our relationship, and so we begin. In typical video game fashion, the first level serves as a tutorial and is super simple. We learn the controls and mechanics of the game, and we don't really need to move both May and Cody at the same time here. My god, Cody's not even helping us, which is basically the theme throughout most of the game. As you'll see, I kinda just pick one controller up, move to the next area, and then pick the next controller up and do it again, and that almost always works works. Major emphasis on almost, as you'll see later. There's definitely moments that require the use of both controllers like right here. I had to time a ground pound together before going back solo. To close out this section, Dr. Hakeem reveals a vacuum that Cody broke and May forgot to fix, which if you ask me is kind of instigating an argument not fixing their relationship. Anyways, Dr. Hakeem says the thing and May says exactly what I'm thinking. Collaboration! Strong point. Cody and May do not work well together so far and have been arguing pretty much all the way up to this point. Trust is clearly not their strong suit. Something I personally love about It Takes Two is the major difference between each level as you progress. I should also note that we haven't earned any trophies yet and that's really because there's only one story trophy in this entire game and you earn that once you beat the game. But there's others along the way as well so don't worry. Every level in this game has a theme or a gimmick to it. This one here is vacuum cleaner themed and we have to get sucked up, which I thought was wrong at first. Oh, I was supposed to go this way, okay. <laughs> I was confused. Since I'm the certified gamer that I am, it didn't take me long to figure this gimmick out, which was another example of having to use both players at once. Oh, I get it. I hold the vacuum up and then I bring then I bring Cody collaboration. Luckily for me, these kinds of obstacles tend to be easy, or so I thought. Here's another section requiring both players that's a bit tougher. Not to the point of being unbeatable, but just that it requires a little more focus. I have to press triangle with one character to flip the direction these fans blow, so we can float across them with the other character. And we are just warming up for the good stuff to come. Like this boss fight here against our old pal, the vacuum cleaner. I tend to focus up quite a bit during these moments, which is evident by my facial expressions. Very similar to my other videos, honestly, I don't know why I do that. Anyways, I learned something very important here, only one character needs to stay alive at any given time. Basically, they can take turns dying and they can even respawn so long as the other character is alive. In this boss fight, we have to use both Mei and Cody to suck up some explosives and then aim them at the boss. A very easy task if I do say so myself, except I was terrible and it wasn't very easy. Oh my god, oh bro! On the next attempt, I learned I should probably dodge this dude's attacks and that worked well until I got too cocky. Yo, I'm so focused right now. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh, oh. Bruh. They, they stun you. I said I was so focused, but they stun you. <laughs> like, what was I supposed to do? Oh, come on. One, one more. Nope. Yo, I'm terrible at this. All right, that time I was just adjusting the controllers because I kept them on my lap this entire video and it was not the most comfortable thing in the world, I'm just saying. When I finally only focused on keeping one of them alive, it became much more doable, especially with a very quick respawn time. Finally, I didn't talk this time. I just stayed silent and focused. And with that, we defeated our first boss and earned the trophy. Oh, right, there's only one story trophy. We defeated our first boss and moved on. From now on, May and Cody both receive different power-ups in each level, which help you to navigate the puzzles. In this one, May gets a special hammer while Cody can shoot nails. Oh my goodness, I can hit Cody into <laughs> And both characters have to obviously work together to progress forward. Before we make any real progress though, we come across our first mini game. This one is appropriately named Wacka Cody. Developers knew most people won't be crazy and play all alone and instead will ideally play with a partner in crime. So they've 
they've included plenty of mini games like this one scattered throughout all the levels, which is great for us because there's a trophy that comes with it at the end. Moving on, we have to shoot nails in the right spot as Cody so that May can swing across them. Doing this one at a time is easy, of course, but the challenge here once again comes when you have to control both of them at once. Here we have to activate and deactivate platforms so that May can navigate across. Cody only has three nails total, so it's required to deactivate platforms after we move May along. Bro. <laughs> I did fail here a couple times because this section involves wall jumping. Still getting used to the whole two controller here thing, guys. I pressed the wrong button again. But after a few tries, it's definitely possible and really not too bad to get past this obstacle. Up next is the second boss fight in the game, and this time, as you can see, it's a crazy old toolbox. It shoots nails at you and uses its arms to sweep you, and whenever it does that, Cody has the opportunity to nail his arm to the plywood. This gives us a chance for May to swing across and get some hits in. Nice, right, so let's do this. Yeah! And then phase two, we have to dodge more nails, and since I learned my lesson from the vacuum fight, I really only focused on keeping one character alive. Cody is then launched up into the air to finish the job. Oh yeah! Throw that toolbox out! Time for a new one. This chapter was indeed pretty short, and we finish it off with an on-rail section before visiting the treehouse in the backyard. If you ask me, this short area in the game looks pretty amazing, and I really do wish we would have spent more time here. In the next chapter, May gets herself a lethal weapon while Cody gets to shoot tree sap that can bring counterweights down to open doors for him. With our new totally evenly powered abilities, we're able to solve puzzles to move through the tree. These are pretty simple puzzles and I'm a little embarrassed to admit how long it took me to get through this section so let's just skip ahead. Pretty short while later, we come across a crazy wasp with a riot shield. Bro, why does a wasp have a shield? What am I seeing? Here we have to time our attacks and oh yeah, Cody can't deal any damage on his own. Instead, his tree sap is explosive so he just gets things ready for May to shoot up. This fight was again pretty easy and hopefully you're sensing a theme here. For a co-op game, It Takes Two is surprisingly easy to play solo. Until this next mini boss fight that finally gave me some trouble. Bro, another boss? Now this big boy wasp here gets to shoot a ray gun at us while we take him on with the same boring offense. Cody scores the assist by priming the wasp up with his warm goo while May comes in to blow it up. But the ray gun is pretty hard to dodge and it did cost me quite a few lives and runs. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, Cody and May each probably died at this fight here at least 30 times before I finally got to the end of it. Mainly because you only get a few seconds to shoot with May before the sap wears off, meaning Cody has to do his thing again. It all pays off though because the game finally rewards us this far into the game and video with a nice little surprise. I believe this camera actually works. If I'm not mistaken, we should be in for a treat here. Should be in for a treat. Struck a pose, my first trophy. This chapter was completely filled with boss fights that we'll skip past because this next section is one of my favorites in the entire game and honestly one of the most difficult too. Basically we're escaping the tree on a makeshift plane and we just barely make it before an enemy appears. We're on one tick of health right now, did we make it? One tick of health. <laughs> that was great, that was great. Oh. This starts a 2D fight between May and this squirrel, which is honestly so cool. Ooh, we're, we're actually- Oh, I'm still flying! It's Street Fighter. It's actually easier than shooting, though. It's not easier than shooting, I lied. It's not easier than shooting. Bruh. What? Yeah, the problem here is I'm still flying with Cody on one controller and then fighting with May on another. The squirrel is no joke either. He's clearly been practicing his combos and even pulls out the Hadouken. Easily the hardest section in the game so far, but still so cool. I then got fatality by the squirrel too, it's actually nuts. Okay, so this time I realized I needed to be more defensive, especially with focusing on not crashing the plane, and this new approach seemed to work well in my favor. Kick and dodge, kick and dodge, kick and dodge. Kick and dodge, kick and dodge, oh! Alright. Good. oh no! Yo, this is, this is crazy. I never liked squirrels. The 
key is keeping your distance. Oh my gosh, the ship, the, the, the ship, not the ship, the plane. That was a big hit. Oh, we're right there. Big up. Oh, yes. We got him, we got him, we got him. Yes. Keep hitting him. <laughs> Yo, that was awesome. I'm not going over every mini game and every miscellaneous trophy, but I just had to showcase this one because it's a sweet Easter egg of a way out. Another co-op only game by the same developers. Plastic prison breakers. I like it. I like that trophy. It's cool. Fast forward some more to the one single section that I struggled with the most of the entire game that should have been easy once you see the solution. Oh my goodness. I need to turn the cameras at the same time. I need to turn the cameras at the same time. For now though, the struggle is real. These blocks I'm jumping on sink as soon as one player jumps on them. And at the same time, another block appears in front of you, giving you just a no. few seconds. Oh no, I was focused on turning Cody and then May fell. To jump to the next block. This was a huge obstacle for oh me. Oh my goodness. I'm doing worse every time. How am I getting worse? I was streaming this section and it's honestly hilarious how much time I spent at it, but then I realized what I needed to do here was actually super simple. That's right, the game allows the second player to respawn ahead if they fall behind. Just a small detail that I didn't know about and could have saved me so much time and embarrassment. Wait, did I just... What? Bro! <laughs> what? From here, the remaining sections are fun and very manageable for us loners. We operate some toy dinosaurs, we sail the seven seas plundering booty, take part in the circus where this happens. We have to balance? Oh no! <laughs> Wait, what? what just happened? Why did I fall? You literally don't have to use your... Like, I'm not even controlling Cody. He just stands... He just stays still. That was very easy. <laughs> yeah, by now I'm definitely feeling like a gamer because that balancing part was supposed to be difficult alone. And even this part here, which I thought was gonna be tough, only took me a few tries. No! <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, only took like three chances. I even got the chance to express my creativity and become an artiste, which did earn me a trophy. It's like a cartoon. Realize your art. Nice. That's a gold. Why? Soon after, the game turns into a fantasy style RPG where we literally get different attacks for each character. Oh, there's really abilities? Hold on, wait. There's actual attacks? This game like just keeps getting better and better and like surprises me. Again, the devs absolutely nailed the level design with another super fun section of the game. We fight off enemies in waves and this is also where one of my favorite boss fight happens. This is a chess themed boss where the animated pieces attack according to what they are. Bishops attack diagonally, rooks attack in a straight line, but I did notice one piece was incorrect. The knights <laughs> acted like horses and attacked in stampedes, which I kinda wish wasn't a thing, but whatever, still super fun overall. Wait, the knights are wrong. The stampede, the knights are wrong. Oh, come on. The next chapter after this one did not live up to the bar that this RPG chapter set, but that's at least how I felt anyways. Here, the power-ups for Cody and May were just not that cool. Cody can reverse and speed up time for different areas of the map, while May can leave clones behind that she can instantly teleport to. I will admit the puzzles are some of the most creative in this section, but just the power-ups aren't that cool. On the bright side, two of my favorite trophies are in this chapter. First, we have to climb this tower, which is a short platforming section where each jump has to be timed a little differently. Each player needs to make it to the top to earn the trophy for themselves. So in this case, I'm only worried about Cody. Sorry, May. I failed this like six times, so that explains the deep breath here. <sighs> that was kind of fun. Took a couple tries, but it was fun. The next trophy is called Force Triangulated, and you'll see in just a moment why this one is cool. It's a Zelda reference. Force triangulate is the name of the trophy. I get it. 
The end portion of this section does make up for the lackluster abilities because it allows for this amazing sequence. There was an explosion and Cody uses his time altering abilities to forward and rewind time for broken pieces of wood to fly past May. This gives her the ability to jump along them to get to safety. A1 creativity here once again by the devs. Next up is a favorite of many people who played this game. The snow globe chapter is just beautiful in terms of art and design. Cody and May each get different halves of a magnet and we get to attract and repel different colored objects around the area. Using our abilities, we get to reunite some oddly colored turtles with their mother for a trophy. We take some time for ourselves to go sledding. I have to say Cody and May seem to be getting along now by this time, much different from the start of the game. Oh, and we finally get that booty that we were trying to plunder earlier. A pirate I was meant to be, trim the sails and roam the sea. And that's about it for this section. I don't want to show too much of this part in case any of you play this game. Trust me, it's worth it. Now, you may have noticed we've gone a little too long without having any trouble. After all, it's supposed to take two. So here, May can use her stunning voice to move objects around, while Cody, he can shoot symbols which isn't that cool. Again, May gets the cooler upgrade. This section of the game might have been the hardest area to navigate alone. Unlike the blocks from earlier where I learned I could jump across oh. one at a time, here I had to move both characters at once. Oh, this is a problem. Oh, this is a problem. I gotta bring Cody across. You see, I just told you May can move objects with her voice, and that's what we have to do here. Problem is, she needs to be right near the symbols for it to arise, and she can't sing forever, which only gives us a few seconds to move. Oh, and then May falls. Come on. We have to get Cody across with May at the same time before we have to keep jumping forward. Come on. So the priority here is to get Cody across because May is able to jump along on her own. Go, Cody! Oh, <laughs> I made it to the last record. It's hard to get mad, but this is such a fun game. But it's still frustrating. Bro! No! All right, new strategy. May only needs to make it to the second to last disc. May only needs to make it to the second to last disc. After that, Cody is on his own. He doesn't need May anymore. Oh, we did it, we did it. Oh, May just fell, it's okay. Yo, it's so hard coordinating your both your hands like this. I'm just gonna put that controller down. We cannot risk Cody falling. This isn't even a boss fight either, and it was a hard section of the game. One of the tougher sections by far. I don't recommend this for you to do at home. That was pretty much the last difficult part of the game. We're in the home stretch now and it's time to earn some trophies. The first one is for finding all mini games. It should be the last mini game. Let's go, mini game megalomania. Mini game megalomania. Megalomania, hard word to say. There's only one thing left. Just need to prove that it actually just takes one. If you haven't noticed, this last chapter is musically themed, so it's only right we visit the club. Here we have one last fun section that's straight out of Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. Technically, Cody and May are racing here, but this section was a little too bright for my old eyes, so I just went one at a time. That way I didn't have to focus too much. Cut me some slack, guys. I just turned 25 a few weeks ago, so I'm getting old. After that, we run the club. There's four stations here, and Cody and May each take care of two of them. Okay. It's a bunch of mini games here. There's a little like tap tap revenge guitar hero section right here. I have to like spin the analog stick down there by the turntables and we have to control the fog too. I kind of like this. I say that about like every mini game before May gets one last hoorah. Yeah, she gets the spotlight here, but it's okay. She's the one that's talented with a beautiful voice. Cody just kind of throws symbols around. All this leads up to a beautiful moment between our two lovebirds. This beautiful moment, by the way, is enough to break the spell for our heroes, returning them back to their human bodies to be one happy family again, along with their daughter, Rose, okay. who, so, by the way, is the reason for the entire spell in the first place. She bought the book, AKA Dr. Hakeem, and is to be the one to blame for all the troubles we just went through. But I guess it was fun, so it was worth it. It took two. 
Except it didn't take two. Power couple, baby. Power couple. I set out to challenge myself to make It Takes Two's Platinum a little harder than it needed to be, but if you want to see a real hard platinum, click on the screen right here.